We live in a world that hopes it will not have difficulty, that hopes there will be no tragedy, that hopes we'll have good health, that hopes everything will go up and to the right, up and to the right. But that's not the world we live in. We live in a world where things sometimes have a drastic downturn. We live in a world where people disappoint us, fail us, even deceive us. We live in a world where our health is is fragile and and oftentimes we or someone we love is stricken with cancer or some deadly disease that takes them way earlier than we would ever hope. We live in a world that, frankly, is not going up and to the right. There are things around us all the time in our lives and in the lives of those around us and those we love that do not go according to our plans. We need a hope that's not of this world because what's happening in this world is things continue to degrade. Therefore, we need a perspective that is actually built not on this world, but on a world to come, on the one who created the world and has promised to recreate the world for his good and his purposes. When you and I build our hope on Jesus, we build our hope on the confidence of God's plans for us, not our plans for us. Um, Jeremiah 29, 11, right? Such a famous passage. Uh, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. A hope and a future. That's what Jesus has promised us. A hope and a future. It doesn't matter what's happening now. It matters what's going to happen in the future, uh, around the corner. And that hope can abide with me now so that I trust not in something fragile of this world in the present moment, but I trust in the one who is with me in the present moment and has promised to take me through all these moments and make me in the process more like him. This requires a willingness to embrace the suffering of our world. Romans chapter 5, verse 3 says um, that we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings. Now, I want you to notice what the, what the author is doing here. Paul is talking about the future hope of his glory, right? His second coming. But not only so, we also rejoice in our suffering in the present moment. Why? This is what he says. Because we know, we know something. That means that we've trained our mind to believe in what God has promised us. What is that? We know that suffering produces perseverance. And perseverance produces character. And character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us. Why? Verse 6, because God has poured out. Maybe verse 5. Because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. You see, when we accept a relationship with Jesus, entering, entering into this living hope, this new birth, we are given his spirit, Romans 8 says, as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. The believer in Jesus Christ is putting their hope not in what is going on in the current circumstances, but in the one who is present with us in the current circumstances and has promised to do a good work, refining our character, refining who we are, our spiritual formation, is being accomplished in the midst of our current struggles and suffering. That's the world we live in, and that's the promise we depend on. I'll see you tomorrow. Put your hope in him.